As we edge closer to a brand new squeaky clean 2024-2025 championship campaign, I thought I'd revisit my predictions for the brand new season. Who do I now think is going to get promoted to the Premier League? Who do I think now will get relegated to League One? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. another video today we're going to take an updated look at my championship predictions for this upcoming season that's right we now know the vast majority of clubs 95 percent of the clubs in the division have a manager and of course some transfer activity has been going on behind the bloody scenes what has that done to sway my vote sway my opinion well today we're going to take a little look at it if you do though where you've been smash your subscribe button you want stop shop for championship football is right here under one rooski we've got rovers World football, everything here under one roof. So do us a favour, smash the like if you don't mind, and let's, of course, take a deep dive into it. So, of course, I've done one of these videos already at the back end of the season, just after the playoff whistle uh, drew. I dropped it. Um, but since then, I've, I've the dust has settled. New managers have come in. Some names have gone. Uh, it's, it's all changed a little bit. It's actually all changed in my prediction. So I wanted to give you my updated thoughts on this. And let's take a look at it. And we're going to do it a little bit differently than we did previously. I'm going to do it via the tier list system with the Premier League logo at the top. So top two in here. Then uh, three to six down here. Middle of the road. And then three unlucky bastards going down. That's right. And again, I did make my early one. This is my sort of middle of the road sort of vibe. I will make one more. Video and that was, of course, when the transfer window is picked up before balls kick. Probably around about one month's time, we'll come back and see if my opinion has changed. So, all right, then, folks, we're going to start smack dab in the middle of the table uh, and we're going to bring it in 13th place in my eyes, Sunderland. That's right. Last time around, of course, they had no coach. Um, uh, there was a lot of rumors banding around, a lot of names banding around, some attractive names banding around, but in the end, they opted for a guy called Reggie Labrie. Now, I have no idea about his, his track record. Um, I don't know what kind of football he plays. So he's he's a bit of a gamble, Sunderland. So, you know, uh, he's French, I believe. You know, it could be a Valerian Ishmael, and of course, blow the league apart and put them up into, into playoffs. Or it could be absolute dog shit and then uh, drag Sunderland the other way. So it is a gamble. Not too sure why they opted for this when there are some other high brand managers who probably could come a, a little less of a gamble than that one. But 13th place for me for Sunderland. Next up into 14th spot. I'm not sure where I put us last time around, but it is Blackburn Rovers. Going to go right here right now into 14th. I'm not convinced that we're going to go down at the moment. Sam Smolich is still here. There is no actual concrete efforts at the moment for, for him. So we are, we still have him and that is great. And we do have some money in the bank. I'm not talking about millions and billions and billions, but we have some money. And uh, the latest talk from Eustace has me believing that we're going to try and bring four or five established players in. So that, that gives me confidence that we may be able to turn this young team into a more steady, eddy, uh, boring uh, team that will just grind out results for the season. I think that's what we're looking for. That's what we're aiming for. A uh, season of transition, perhaps. Uh, to maybe build next season. I'm going to write off the season already and 14th spot for us. And that is what I see. Next up, we have QPR, 15th spot. And that's QPR. Of course, their main asset is their coach, Arti Cafientes, who was linked with the Sunderland job as well as other jobs. Uh, he may still be linked with the job as well. You just don't know because there is one, at least one club in this division without a, a manager as of recording. Um, but uh, right now, Cafientes will be there, which is fine. And, and I think uh, they, they were on the right trajectory for the season. Uh, we'll keep the other on the on the right move upwards. Of course, where they finish, they finished around about uh, 18th right now. So they were on though the steady up there. They did ease those relegation woes before the end of the season. Uh, so I think the momentum will continue. His stock will rise. But what's going on behind the scenes? You know, is there actually any investment going on in QPR? I don't know. So that's why I have them uh, considered low. Then we have Bristol City. Now Bristol City are always. Just a kind of vanilla kind of team. They did finish strong last season under Manning uh, up to 11th. But uh, again, I, I always can't, can't write them off. I write them off. And of course, Bristol City fans just, you know, will use that uh, as fuel for the Flames later on the season when they put five pasture at Ashton Gate. So Bristol City are just difficult to call. I, can't, I cannot see them in the playoff discussion. I cannot see them getting relegated. I see them in the middle of the pack. And I think... Um, I think this season will be a, a backward step for them. I just, I just don't believe that they, they're making the right strides at the moment. And again, I'm going to be here to be convinced otherwise um, uh, later on. Again, I've not done a deep dive in anyone's business. I'm kind of 
in Euro 2024 mode at this moment. I've not done, I know some transfer moves have been going on around the division, but not really done a deep dive. So I don't know where Bristol City are at or what they're looking at or who's left, who's gone, but I will do. But at the moment, my vibe is 16th spot Bristol City. Next up, we have Swansea. Swansea City, I think they are making some moves uh, at the moment. And they did finish 14th last season. Again, I'm not too sure about Luke Williams as the manager coming in from Knox County. It's a big jump. Yes, they did finish strongly in the end of the campaign up to 14th. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what, what what's going to go on with Swansea. I, I, do, I do anticipate a, a backward step. Maybe a bit of cold hard realisation. Because this, divi- this division is tough. It, and, and he had a, a bit of a taster of it last season. Uh, and then ultimately, I think... Um, the teams are you know are just more prepared or the momentum is with them moving forward above them so i have swansea 17th which is fine it's not brilliant but it'll do alongside them will be derby county uh, in my eyes of course they got promoted uh via the top two spots uh, paul warren knows this division he's been here seen it and done it it ain't going to be as a rude awakening as it was for luke williams say um and of course, he's got a relegation on his resume, so he knows what to do. He knows what to avoid. Uh, and they're going to come here, yes, with a bit of momentum, yes, with a bit of positivity. And they are a difficult side at this level. They were at League One, maybe unjust, you would say. But they're back. The fans are back. They're passionate. They're going to be difficult to beat. They're, they're always a pain in the ass to play Derby. They always seem to get a result, especially against my boys. So Derby going to be awkward, but I just don't think they're going to blow this division apart. They'll be safe, 18th in my eyes, which, of course, will be a building block moving forward. Next up we have... Uh, the, the old neighbours uh, not those ones unfortunately it is Preston off end that's right got them down there in to uh, 19th spot uh, Preston off end Ryan Lowe this is, you know he's a love 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 sort of hate relationship uh, uh, Ryan Lowe with the fans perhaps a little bit of a uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, awkward kind of feeling at the moment for them. But um, they did spend money last season. Will they spend money this season? I don't know. Um, they did finish okay tenth last season, but it's a bit, bit of a drop off in my eyes. Maybe just a bit of, bit of envy perhaps because they spent a bit of money on on some players. But I just, you know, Preston, Preston aren't going to get promoted. Surely not. Uh, but I, I just think with when you look at the, the strength of this division, I do have some some big names down the bottom end of this table here, guys. It's not all plain sailing at the top end. There's some big names. Preston off end could, could be, feel a little bit hard done by, by being down this far. But ultimately, I do, I'm do. i standing by it. 19th at the moment. They ain't going nowhere. Alongside them, though, in 20th, I have Watford. That's right. The, the money bags have gone. The uh, parachute payments have gone. It's more like, you know... Trying to salvage a team here. And they got Tom Cleverly as your manager. Yes, he was a draw specialist at the end of the season, finishing 15th. I've got them, I've got them in a bit of a limbo land right now. I don't, I'm not convinced by Cleverly. He will be probably gone before December. Uh, and then it'll be a, 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 it might be too little too late in my eyes. So I've got them surviving 21st spot. Big drop off from 15th, but down there. I think if the season was a little five games longer last season, they probably would have been in that relegation fight and could have even got sucked into it. So I don't believe in the Watford at the moment, but they do survive by the skin of the teeth. Not can be said, though, for the next team. That is Millwall. That's right. Millwall, they did finish a good, strong 13th place. They do have a Millwall uh, uh, you know, legend in their mists and the dugout, Neil Harris. That's all right. That's all said and good. Uh, and, and, and they brought him in for that very reason, because things weren't working out for Millwall. They got him in because he knows the club. Um, but just how long does that kind of that kind of vibe last? You know, if we brought in a, a Blackburn Rovers legend that might get us two or three, four games, it got uh, Millwall over the line and projected up the table. Um, but I just don't think Millwall will get it right this time. I think Neil Harris' uh, effect will, will dry up uh, and I think they'll get sucked back into it. And unfortunately... Who do they turn to next? And no disrespect to Mill, they you know, uh, well, they, you know, they got they're a great location in London. You know, they might have a bit of a lure, but um, uh, I just think it, it, if that if that Neil Harris effect washes off too soon, I don't know who's going to come in to save the day to drag them out of the thick of things. So they are going down in my eyes. Joining them will be the newbies, Oxford United. That's right, Des Buckingham again. Uh, I had my reservations about him last season in League One. I was surprised not only they made the playoffs in the end, but they got promoted. And they've also just lost Josh Murphy, a major creative outlay to them, to their promoted rivals, Portsmouth. So for me, Oxford United uh, are going to whimper in this division. They might give it a little fight a little early. I don't know. I've not really done deep dive again at the opening fixtures. But if they were to get some momentum moving in the direction at the start of the season, then they might have enough 
uh, stability to kind of grind it out and survive last season, kind of like what Plymouth did last season. Good early momentum with them following on from the promotion, but um, ultimately they kind of got sucked into it and were lucky to stick around. But they ain't going to stick around this time around. That's right, Plymouth going down uh, 21st last season, 24th this season. Uh, I'm not the big, you know, Wayne Rooney, man. I tell you what, yes, he's a massive, uh, phenomenal player, but is he the right man to be head coach? I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, and uh, it's a gamble. It's a massive gamble by Plymouth. He might be able to lure some players to sign for him, um, but I don't. I just don't think he's the right guy. And I think they're gonna they're gonna regret taking the gamble on Wayne Rooney uh, in the end. Let's of course now take a little look at mid table and starting into twelfth. We're going to go Portsmouth. That's right. They are riding the momentum train. I don't anticipate an Ipswich Town kind of vibe from Portsmouth, but I think they'll be nice and cosy in mid-table. John Massino got his managerial uh, uh, stripes, been there, uh, did it well at Oxford. Now, of course, transitioned that into a Portsmouth. Uh, you would say a credibly bigger-sized club. And they're back where they belong, Portsmouth. I'm happy that they're here, but I don't think they're going to rip up too many trees along the way, be in mid-table. And of course, going to Frank Park will be intimidating for the, for everybody. Uh, and alongside them will be Sheffield Wednesday. Now, uh, the, you know, again, the main caveat for a lot of these clubs or the main strength is their coach. And Danny Roll is is that. He is a diamond in the rough, picked up by uh, Sheffield Wednesday and uh, turned that ship around magically. Uh, what they're going to do under a full season with Danny Roll, I'm expecting safety. I think I'm expecting they're going to be uh, quite cosy in the 11th. They might even flirt with the playoffs as well. But the finances behind the season, I don't know. Last season, Sheffield Wednesday had no money to rub together. I don't anticipate too much of a change this time around. Uh, of course, they do have a 5 million release clause on Danny Roll. Uh, so uh, if any other bigger club comes looking, they're going to pay, pay the piper to get his services. I think just having him at the helm here, will do Sheffield Wednesday good. They're a big club. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna try and lure some players. Uh, and I think they've also got already brought in a couple. But um, uh, I don't think promotion or playoffs is on the agenda just yet. But with Danny Roll, they're on the right track. Um, just uh, be, be patient unless you lose them in the end. So have Sheffield Wednesday making a huge jump from 20th to 11th in my eyes. Alongside them, again, I, I, not really a big believer in the coach, but I'm going to go Stoke. I'm putting Stoke up a 10th. They've got a good keeper now. Picked him up from uh, Rotherham. Um, but again, the weak link for me is the coach, Schumacher. Now, my anticipation is he will get it wrong. He will be made He, he will may be made uh, um, unemployed at some stage. They'll bring in a better coach, and then they'll drive them up to 10th place uh, in, the, in the thing. So I don't think Schumacher will be there at the end of the season. I think someone else will come in, uh, a more decent caliber coach, more experienced coach, somebody uh, who's looking for a job, and they will they will they will get the best out of this team because uh, they have the right ingredients. I just think the coach is is the weak link in this, but I got them as high as tenth for the right now. Meanwhile, uh, we've got Hull City coming at you at ninth. Uh, let's just go back on Stoke. Stoke finishing 17th. We're going to go ninth with Hull, which is, of course, they finished seventh last season, back down to ninth now. They've also taken a punt with a German coach, Tim Walter. Uh, it, sometimes you get a Danny Roll with a German coach. Sometimes you get that guy who came over for Huddersfield. Didn't really work out. What are we going to get with this Hull City appointment, Tim Walter? It is a gamble. No Rossini no more. They decided to cut ties with him. Young English coach opted for a... a, a it didn't work out the last time they had a foreign coach either. Hull City with, of course, Shota Avaladze coming in. Didn't really work out there. They've just lost the whole the, the Turkish midfielder. So I don't think all that glitters is gold at Hull City. They may have made a real good push for it last season, but spending a lot of money. But right now, this is, there's a big question. I have them in ninth, but I think next time, unless something goes otherwise, I could put them more as low as 15th because I don't know about this. And same could be said for Norwich uh, in eighth. Uh, I have them in eighth right now. I don't know about this Jonas caught up uh, but Norwich do have the players if they've got the right man at the helm uh, they should be all right it's, it's a strong squad decent squad finishing in the playoffs last season but going back a couple of steps because it is a difficult division when you've got the three heavyweights coming down from the Premier League and then also the likes of Leeds etc above you it's going to be difficult to get back in those playoffs and I don't think they're going to I think it's going to be more of a transitional season for Norwich uh, under this new coach but I know the owners and the fans will want to see them make that next step from sixth and beyond. Like I said, they got the players. The new manager always is a gamble. I can't always put my faith in the, in, in a new manager. So you've got to see what you, you, you get there. So I, that's my uh, positions outside the playoffs, I believe. Now let's take a little look at inside the playoffs. Into, actually, hold the phone. 
hold the phone. Uh, I've got, uh, hang on a minute, where are we here? We are 8th, 9th, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, where the fuck's Cardiff? Cardiff, sorry, I, I, I forgot about Cardiff. Uh, sorry, I got your hopes up. <laughs> oh, no, no, Cardiff, don't don't even go there. You're, you're down here, brothers. You're down here. Yeah, I have you all the way down into 20th. I skipped you. I skipped you. I got excited when I saw Watford. Sorry, Cardiff. Yeah, Heartbreak Hotel. You're all the way down there into 20th, which was a drop-off of 12th. Don't get me wrong, Balut did wonders for last time around. Second season syndrome under the coach, I think. Uh, again, it's a tough division. You'll be all right. You'll be survived. But I think... With the 12th place finish last time around, maybe you've reached your ceiling under him already. Um, but I might be wrong. So uh, uh, sorry, Cardiff, down there in 20th. So now, now let's focus in. We have one more spot just outside the present, and that is seventh place. And it is Luton Town. That's right, Luton Town back. They did get promoted via the playoffs last time around. But it is a stacked top six, guys. A stacked top six. Don't get me wrong, Luton Town do have a lot of key players. But keeping a hold of them is monumental. Keeping a hold of Kaminsky will be va will be massive. I know a lot of Premier League clubs will be scrambling for, uh, you know, not only number one goalkeepers, but backup goalkeepers. And in some places, third goalkeepers. I just saw West Ham pick up Fodderingham as, as a number three. Uh, would you add him and eat it? So um, yeah, Kaminsky is a great goalkeeper and uh, the key personnel, Barkley as well from, from Luton Town. They're going to be a different sort of side here in the championship. And again, a different side than a... Uh, uh, you know, than they were in the previous time they were in the championship. I think they'd be a bit more uh, fluid, a little bit more, uh, but that's not the Luton way. And I don't think they're going to, I think they're going to fall a little short in this one uh, on their first return to the championship. But into top six we go and the playoffs. And we're talking about Coventry City. They're going to do it. Spending money already. They've got a good uh, team from last team around. Hadji Wright uh, scoring goals for fun. They've got, uh, uh, you know, a good bunch of, bunch of players. And they just missed out again. They were ninth last season. They'll make another step. I think last season was their transitional season with this new core of players. But I think they'll make another step beyond and go into sixth spot. Robbins is the man uh, at the helm at the moment. And uh, I think they'll do fantastic. Next up, big surprise here. Big cutoff. Big drop off. And it is Burnley. Why? Because they still haven't got a manager. And what it appears to be uh, is that they're going for Craig Bellamy at this moment of recording. And I don't think that will be as good as they hope it will be. Uh, I was a little worried when Ruud van Nistelrooy was linked. I thought they might get the right man there. But uh, I think the current names, Scott Parker, uh, Craig Bellamy, are not really the names that are going to uh, instill top two vibes. Uh, for this club so fifth place and that means that's trouble that's trouble because when you get into the playoffs that's another game uh, and I think they may may fall short in the end don't get me wrong still fifth I'd love to exchange my whatever 14th place for fifth oh yes I would but uh, under Craig Bellamy I don't think that's the right hire uh, but again it's not confirmed we'll see so I have Burnley in a fifth in a fourth I have West Bromwich Albion again they don't, might not have much money to spend on transfers, but they've got some somehow, some lure with wages, bringing, always seem to manage to bring in free transfers. And they're like, they've got those ex experienced pros, your Jed Wallace, your, your Swifts, you know, they've got some, a real good core of players. Um, and they're always there or thereabouts. Again, if they get DK back fit and raring to go, he might score the goals. He might blow up uh, in this division and, and become top goal scorer. Um, but uh, that is, uh, that's like a, that's like rock and roll shit getting him fit. So I have West Brom though in fourth uh, under Corbyn. He is the what, the main link there. Again, he could be lured by, by another club. So keeping hold of him is massive. And then of course I have in third, it is Sheffield United under Chris Wilder. He's been there, seen it and done it. However, it is going to be tough this time around. Sheffield United may not have the, uh, the finances or the lure as they used to, but, um, they're going to be comp competitive and, and, and we'll just fall short. I think we could have a nice title race on our hand in that top five. And I'd love to see a five-team, five-six team battle for the title in the end. That would be uh, fantastic. I don't like these ones where one team just blows it up like uh, Leicester and, and Ipswich did last season. I hope it's more tight towards the end. But into the top two, we're going to go with Middlesbrough. He'll get it right this time. Michael Carrick uh, making a huge jump from eighth all the way up to second in my eyes. But no one's going to stop the runaway train because they've kept hold of Farker. I think that's the right call. Um, and Leeds will be top spot in my eyes. What do you think about that? Let me know down below. And again, use this chance between now and July. And, <coughs> sorry, end of July to convince me otherwise. Say, Dirk, you're talking out your ass. Hull are going to be up there. Dirk, you're talking out your ass. QPR are going to get relegated. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. We look forward to seeing what you say about the, the current state of play and the championship. Again, I've not done a deep dive in each one of these clubs' transfer business or even looked at their fixtures. I've only looked at Rovers, uh, and right now we're pretty much, you know, stagnant 
Um, but um, but hey, things can change dramatically within a month's time in football world. So I'm going to stick with this right now. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. We'll do them all again very, very soon. But until then, we're done.